Welcome back everyone, uh, today I would like to talk about laws. Um, I have been going, going coming to the, the conclusion that uh, talking about the economy a lot, I am a economist at heart and uh, I've been uh, playing this game a lot as thinking the, the economy above all, right? And I've been uh, trying to uh, reach out in my videos about how important how to be most efficient in the economy using spreadsheets and whatnot, right? And I come to the re realization that loss in the very early game, loss is the most important thing to consider, not only for, you know, your country as a whole, but for the economy as well. It really doesn't matter um, how darn efficient you are um within in uh, you know um like uh, building sawmills when you're supposed to and building iron mines where you're supposed to if you're not if your laws are horrendous um then it really doesn't matter because some some laws like traditionalism right and surf them are so detrimental to your economy that in every gain that you can do by like efficiency ga gathering from spreadsheets and whatnot are redundant, right? So I was thinking we should talk about uh, um, laws today. What what laws are good and what laws are not? Um, what you should be striving towards in uh, in law wise? What 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 does these these game mechanics mean? Um, and what goes on under the hood, right? All right, uh, so first we need to get some things out of the way. This game allows for some, some like this game, <clears throat> sorry, this, this game allows for some amount of roleplay, right? There are laws in here, um, agrarianism, for example. Um, there are uh, laissez-faire uh, in contrast to interventionism, which is just different labors of capitalism. There are, uh, you know, the monarchy and the theocracy and then, you know, eventually communist and council republic. There are some laws that are just uh, there to, sp you know, spice up the game, to be able to roleplay for you. Like, do I want to run a constitutional monarchy? Do I want to run a full... Um, there are two different type of communism, three different types of communism actually, anarchy and co-ops uh, co and uh, absolute like dictatorship Stalinism, right? Um, so there are some laws that are like there to make you like, I, I want to shape my country in different ways and not to be, you know, be objectively worse or better game mechanically wise. Uh, but then we have some laws and some considerations that are just game mechanically superior in every aspect, right? As a general heuristic, very broadly, general heuristic, uh, going from top, the top, and down the law tree are generally more progressive. Um generally more towards like uh, liberalism or even communism uh, and socialism um, and also generally game mechanically better going from in traditionalism which is the worst law in the game uh, to like command economy which is like on par with co corporate ownership because it's a type of communism which is an extremely late game thing right um, generally better going from state religion which discriminates a whole lot of pops it gives you some benefits in the early game but it discriminates a whole lot of pops it doesn't um it doesn't allow migration from other religions so generally you want to be moving down from state religion to total separation state atheism is a bit of a weird one um because atheism actually counts as a religion in this game um which is uh, it's it's a interesting feature they they added not long ago but as a general heuristic a total separation is the best law here game mechanically wise uh you want to be on hereditary bureaucrats is, is like it it could be worth staying on for some nations with huge populations like 
you know, China or, or the East India Company or India or something like that. Uh, but as a general heuristic, you want to be moving to appoint the bureaucrats super, uh, like, uh, you know, pretty, pretty early. And then when, in the very late game, when you have a lot of institutions, you could even um, consider um, uh, moving to elected bureaucrats. Uh, it's a it's a toss up. Like I I usually stay on appointed bureaucrats because I like the intelligentsia buff that it gets. I don't like the petty bourgeoisie in my games to be powerful. Uh, but as game mechanically wise, like you you don't lack taxation capacity in the the in the late game um, and the bureaucracy and you have a lot of institutions generally. So your bureaucracy is is better. Um, it, there are some considerations as well when we're going through these laws that you want some of one of the most important aspects is that you you want to balance your uh, you want to balance your um, interest groups and you want to keep some of them powerful because some of them gives a really powerful bonuses and you will want to keep some of them weak because you will uh, well they're not you know they will not be happy with you for for one and they will probably just you know be in the way as an obstacle for you in politically wise right uh we'll get to that later though but yeah as a general heuristic try to like it's a it is go from top the top the top one is often horrendously it bad or or some it, it is well not optimal optimal and you go down it is generally better moving towards more liberal more liberal more towards socialism and less towards absolutism and you know um monarchists and, and uh, stuff like that right unfortunately it's not always that simple right uh, but as a general heuristic um, you want to be moving okay so speaking from get just yes a game mechanical standpoint um monarchy and and you know absolutism and serfdom and slavery all of those like you know absolute empire kind of thing um are generally game mechanically worse uh, as the game progresses uh, that that's just a truth of the game that the, it's a bit unfortunate that they you know the game mechanics doesn't really support you couldn't absolutely there's no there's not nothing stopping you from from keeping like an absolute monarch throughout the game but the game the game mechanically like just speaking from a boring kind of a game mechanical standpoint you want to be moving towards a more liberal economy and it might even be the case for that that um, certain types of communism is the uh, quote unquote best a political system in the very late game, right? So with that out of the way, uh, what what do you should what you, should you be thinking about when you're thinking about laws? Well, in the early game, your top priority, whatever else, right, should be trying to get rid of traditionalism if you're on that, and it should. Uh, you should try to be get rid of slavery if you have slavery, and you should try to be get, get rid of serfdom if you're on serfdom. Those are your top three priorities. It, one of the reasons I keep pushing sawmills as a uh, as a like the best building in the game is because the, the sawmills help you in this endeavor. Like getting off traditionalism and getting off slavery and getting off serfdom is so da darn important that your economy kind of gets like it, it, it takes a, um kind of takes a secondary uh, role uh, until you get off get off those right um so so your main goal in the early game is actually not like well it is those the they go in tangent right they help each other right you you build sawmills you build up your resource economy you can construct more but it also it's one of the quickest way to increase the clout of industrialists and other people who will help you like demolish the power the strong power of the landowners and the monarch that, that, that that's often uh, uh, the case right uh, you know getting that's why russia russia is like an interesting one because russia is like the one of the strongest countries in the game 
potentially. The only thing that stops them, really, is serfdom and, and traditionalism. Uh, and their low literacy and technology. So, if they didn't have those um, kind of backwater thing going for them, Russia would absolutely demolish everybody, like every game, right? They, if they had, if they started on interventionism, had decent technology, and and uh, uh, didn't have served them, Russia would. I'm pretty sure that Russia would probably just demolish every, uh, like every country, they. Uh, try their hands on right russia has a lot of resources they have like um yeah a lot of like the probably the most logging logging in the game uh, easily available to them they have like almost all natural resources except for sulfur which is a bit scarce um they have huge population they can just you know use in the military use in the factory they have like the they got you got a lot of expansion on purity so if like the only thing that's stopping russia from world domination really is because that they are on uh, they are on traditionalism they are on autocracy monarchy uh, and serfdom which is just it gives the landowners such a like um hard um, um give the liner so much clout that that it, it stop stops ab, any any type of um like uh, modernizing or or um, uh, progressive um, uh, movements and they i think that, that 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 is you know on purpose trying to mimic what what happened in, in real life but it's also a, a balance thing right russia would like pro properly just demolish um, Europe if if uh, they weren't so backwater um, like because much of the struggle playing at Russia um, is trying to get off traditionalism and serve them so, so people will actually work in your factories and when and uh, um, whatnot right that's why like you know the UK and France is such a such in a good position because not because well you know they they have decent population as well and the uk obviously have this huge colonial empire which they can just import resources from right but like france for example is often a contender of france played properly is can surpass uh uk pretty easily because they they start on interventionism and can quickly move to other more progressive laws if you know the, the, obviously there's a lot of political things going on with the uh, Napoleons and stuff, right? But um, if uh, France played properly, you start on per capita taxation, you start on wealth voting, and you start on interventionism, like public schools, even like so, and dedicated police force, right? So you, France played properly, you could just explode because you, you like you, you already have capitalists paying for buildings. You have like your industrialists will be could be pretty strong right they 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 will they could get a uh, pretty large clout which will grant the um the bonus that increases um, um capital investments and this is like a snowball that just keep on giving right so the 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 russia's in capil in, in, in well yeah russia's incapacity to um, like get the snowball rolling, running, so to speak. Like they pay for every construction themselves and 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 whatnot. That that's what's keeping them from world domination, really. So, uh, what laws should you be stri trying to strive for? Well, you should be trying to strive for, well. Except, you know, getting rid of traditionalism to basically any other system. Interventionism or laissez-faire is the go-to, like, um, this is the, what should be replacing traditionalism. Sometimes you have, like, getting laissez-faire is harder because, you know, it's more radical uh, swing to the capitalists and people might be radicalized. Farmers uh, and, and uh, landowners, right? So if you can get on inter in, uh, interventionism... That is totally fine. Be careful though that that if you are on interventionism, the the kind of political will to go even further to laissez-faire might diminish. So you might be 
quote unquote stuck on interventionism um, if uh, you you choose it. But I, I that risk is pretty small. So I would still like if if you can pass interventionism and you can't really pass laser affair, I should I should still go for interventionism. Interventionism is a perfectly fine law which you can be on the entire game um, if if that is. Uh, uh, if you if you have to it, it's it's a perfectly fine law that just um gives you a, a well-rounded kind of balance between the private sector and uh, private construction sector and your construction um so and, and stuff like that right sometimes you even need like if you you're desperate and you can go to agrarianism first like as a middle step kind of a thing that that is also worth it um, especially like in, in countries like Brazil and stuff like that, who, who has a la very large kind of um, agriculture, like it, not serfs, but farmers um, who um, uh, are pushing for agrarianism. You, anything but traditionalism, like anything that, that it's a not tradition, tradition, traditionalism, oh, Lord, is better. <laughs> So every, every every one of these is better, and obviously you want to be, um, well, you don't need to if you're on laissez faire interventionism, you don't need to go down the socialism route. Um, that is kind of a f more a choice of, of, that you have to make. I think the numbers work out in a way that uh, socialism actually is a bit better, at least. You should be stri trying to strive towards your trade union, trade unions being strong. So even if they're, if you're not going full like socialism, and you, you should be trying to please them, and you should be trying to make them a um, strong, so you get the maximum amount of bonuses from them, right? It's actually a good segue to be talking about the uh, uh, the distribution of power laws, right? So, this is generally what determines who has political strength in your country. Except, you know, you can in, you can try to do it with the economy, right? You can... It, so, political clout is mostly, like, everything else equal. Political clout and political power is determined by how wealthy these people are. So, for example, aristocrats... Are and capitalists are generally wealthy, which will mean that they will, whatever they vote on, will get kind of a more, it, it, it will get a more strength kind of a thing. It, like one vote doesn't one, it doesn't equal one, um, one in in political power. That that's just how the game is modeled, right? So it. And then also we accept the wealth, right? So you can try to increase and de increase and decrease the wealth of, of different pops to try to like you could um, put consumption taxes on farms and uh, and and stuff like that, trying to uh, um, import um, like stuff that the aristocrats and and the landowners produce, so that they, they will get you know poorer, which will make their clout go down, stuff like that. You can do stuff like that. Um, you can obviously the main going to is to increase the you know build sawmills and and hire more pops of the you know you want to hire more capitalists in your uh, buildings you want to hire more uh, machinists and engineers and whatnot that and 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 intelligentsia obviously academics like almost all of the intelligentsia power comes from just employing academics in universities in. Uh, um, you know, art academies if you have to, right? But it, but it's uh, in urban centers and bureaucrats. It's also kind of votes um, um, intelligence. Yes. Uh, same thing obviously goes for uh, so welfare, um, social security. Um, something you want in the late game actually, because you have a consumption based economy, so you actually want money, like. You might not be constructing that much anymore because you're reaching full employment, which means that you kind of want to insert a like money in the economy, a uh, some other way. You're like you're probably on low or medium taxation. You don't have any consumption taxes anymore. 
um, you still might probably have some un unemployment. Like you, you want consumers then more than anything else, and you want to push down a living because you want to push migration um, because you you're running out of people and you people is what makes an economy. Um, so you want migration. Um, so you want standard of living to be high. That, therefore, you want the, all of these to be the, all of these push um, standard of living. So you want like pensions and whatnot to be decently high. Careful though, it, 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 if you do it too early, it might, you know, be it might be difficult. But um, you, you, you'll find a balance. It, it, like if you enact it and then it's too much, you can just scale it down, and it's it's uh, fine. Health system, obviously, uh, the more health, the better. You, as previously mentioned, you want population. Population is what makes or breaks the game. Um, health, like population growth, isn't that much of a problem. Um, health system, like health, um, pub public health insurance and, and whatnot, got a massive buff recently because it actually counteracts pollution. Now, uh, it didn't, pollution wasn't a thing before, and now pollution is pr actually quite massive. Um, I don't, this is obviously in the early, the er uh, early game, so there's no re really pollution to speak of, right? But um, pollution might actually be, um, uh, like, it, it, it wraps up, um, especially with automation laws and, and uh, stuff like that, right? So, so um, uh, you... Uh, definitely want to counteract it so uh, absolutely more the more health system the better um, obviously you don't want to be on migration controls because you want um, uh, population you obviously don't want to um, you want to have the most liberal kind of citizenship laws as possible to to um, make sure that you, you're not discriminated discriminating uh, any pop Getting to multiculturalism is actually really hard since they nerfed it. Um, you kind of need to re-roll a lot of um, a lot of rulers and and maybe in invite dissidents and and well, and there, there there's an event chain for it. It, it. It's really hard. At least try to get the cultural exclusion as much as possible to try to um, get a, as much uh, migration as possible. So generally, try to sphere like try to bring people into your market who, who's, whose population you don't discriminate against. Um, this is mainly kind of like Sweden and, you know, obviously doesn't discriminate against whole, all of Scandinavia. Um, Prussia and Austria obviously don't discriminate when on, when on um, cultural exclusion, don't discriminate against Germans and Poles. Um, Spain is a huge one because Spain doesn't discriminate against all of South America, like all the, the Portuguese, the Brazilians, the Bolivians, all the, like they, they, if they are on cultural exclusion, they, um, they, they accept all of the pops from South America, which is uh, huge, and and Mexico and Central America, obviously. So that's huge. So you can you can siphon a lot of population from Southern Central and South America if you are on the proper citizenship law. Obviously, trade policy. Oh, well, obviously, it's not not that obvious actually. Trade policy is an interesting one because in the very, very, very late game, you kind of you you are not opposed to having like free trade, but in in the mid game and the early game, free trade can actually be very detrimental to you because you people will just try to you you will always in a single player campaign especially um, you will always be kind of the first. Um, you will be the first on everything. You will have the largest lumber camps. You will have the largest coal production. You will have the largest, like, you will be the first one to produce, well, well, basically anything. Which means that people will try to steal that from you. Um, like, if you industrialize first as Prussia or France or whatever, Austria and the UK and, and Russia will try to steal your coal from you and your steel from you. And steel is like, steel is something you want to import actually, because steel is so hard to produce because it takes so much to construct the steel mill. And it's not a really nice, it's not really a profitable industry either, or not very efficient. So, so like, if they try to start to steal, yeah, well, steal your steel, if they start to, um, <laughs> take this your steel from you that's actually bad 
So actually being on, being on, being left on mercantilism totally fine for most of the game. Uh, being on protectionism also like pretty okay, especially if you're on a like a country such as you know Russia or China or you know uh, UK maybe if you keep your colonies around. Um, if you have all of the resources at home, America, if you have most of your resources at home and you don't really need to do that a lot of trading, well, why just be, you can be on protectionism and, or mercantilism and uh, just uh, uh, make so sure to put tariffs on all of your, uh, um, all of your exports and, and on, or on their imports, just make sure that you keep the goods that you need uh, for yourself. Um, in the late game, you, uh, you want to kind of move towards an export oriented economy because you will be, be you're, you 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 know with the economies of scale and then with technology and all that you you're going to be producing a lot more stuff than you actually need this is why the move to socialism or communism is kind of game mechanically wise optimal because you want people to have enough wages so they can buy all of the shit that's being produced <laughs> so so that's why socialism, like, especially co-ops is one of my favorites, because, like, everybody's so rich. Uh, so you, they can just, and, and obviously needs, um, like, the need of goods kind of go up exponentially, right? Which means that, like, you, you they will still buy all of the shit. You, you, they will buy your cars, they will buy your furniture, they, they will buy your glass and porcelain, they will buy your opium, and they will buy, like, they will buy all of the shit that you're producing. If you don't, if you aren't on communism the risk is that like you don't have enough capitalists you don't have enough consumers um to like well it's not that much of a problem but it, 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 it you 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 start to produce so much of everything that you kind of start need to start moving into an export oriented economy um try to export all of your stuff so keep up the demand right and then and, and that might be you know Obviously, the, all, the other great powers are trying to industrialize themselves. They don't, might don't want to import all of the stuff from you. And, the, you know, since the changes with the, the um, MAPI, uh, the market access thing, uh, that severely, uh, that has severely, like, uh, um, ha um, hindered the uh, amount of goods that makes it to someone else's market. Like, you know, depending on what the current market access price impact, um, the level, what, what, you know, what level that is currently, you know, they, they, you know, they might, even if they have in one of their states, they might have a super, super like expensive glass or porcelain price or whatever, right? They, they, they actually, the trade, um, might not even be worth it, right? Since Mappy is a thing that actually debuffs it quite a lot. Um, I think that is it. Obviously, Hope Affairs, you want to be on um, Secret Police is generally considered the best one um, until the very late game where, where the Guaranteed Liberties is um, hands down the best one. Like, when, when you are satisfied with your political landscape, like, this is the political laws I want, this is the political people I want to be in power, um, the Guaranteed Liberties is just plainly better. It just gives you more uh, less revolutions, it gives you less radicals, it gives you more opinions with everybody, it's, it, it is generally better. Secret Police is good uh, when you want to like try to oppress like landowners and, and church and whatnot that you want, don't want in power, um, wh and while also trying to reduce the, the, uh, um, the amount of revolutions and whatnot that the landowners might try to throw when you are trying to re re like get rid of slavery and whatnot. So, so if you can't get on Secret Police, National Guard is uh, totally okay. Secret Police generally better until you can you are satisfied. You may, maybe you you are on you are on the the voting law that you want. You may be on universal suffrage or census suffrage. You are also m maybe on the you know presidential republic, parliamentary republic, and uh, you are on the econ economic law that you, that you want obviously, and you you ab abolish slavery and all that. Yes, so then um, maybe uh, uh, maybe you can go to guaranteed liberties. But guaranteed liberties generally just you just plainly just just 
when when you are satisfied, you you're not trying to oppress anybody and remove political influence, then current liberty is uh, the best one. The same goes for free speech. Um, uh, until, well, until you are outlaw dissent, generally not worth it. Um, but until until uh, you are, uh, you know, when when you are. Um, uh, right of assembly generally just doesn't have a debuff to technology spread, so right of assembly obviously better than than uh, uh, censorship. Um, but like you, you eventually just want protected speech to just increase your te technology, and you, you, you since you're not bolstering or suppression uh, suppressing any interest groups uh, anymore. So you know, uh, until well, when, when the landowners and the, the 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 people you don't want in power are uh, are out of the game, move to protect the speech just objectively better. Um, I think that is generally it. Well, we haven't talked about farming. Um, as I said, get off serfdom as soon as possible. Tenant farming is generally a step. You can you you obviously or you often cannot go from from serfdom to any other of these. Because the people will, you know, the landowners will try to kill you, unless you you actually like you you tank a uh, civil war for it. Um, the uh, uh, you might not be able to go to any of these. If you can, that is um, that is uh, that is obviously advisable. Um, just um, I just look at this red bar. You hover over this red bar, and and uh, if it says it would radicalize the landowners, don't do it. If it says it will just uh, displease them, uh, like that. Like that, oppose like that. That then, then you can go for homesteading instead. Generally, uh, with the help of the farmers, you can try to pass it. Um, if you cannot get off on off on homesteading, um, try to do tenant farmers. They generally the landowners are less like they are, um, uh, you know, less um, opposed to getting on tenant farms instead of serfdom. Serfdom is just so 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 bad for your qualifications and people. Like they, it will actually like trap people into being peasants instead of like being laborers and workers in your factories. So getting off serfdom is that your top priority. If it's on from tenant farmers or homesteading, that is uh, um, doesn't really matter. Uh, just get off serfdom, and uh, um, obviously if you're um, go, go, going um, do. If you're doing more of a capitalist leaning run, go commercial commercialized agriculture in the late game. Um, if you're doing a more socialist leaning um, kind of communist run, um, obviously go collectivist ag collectivist agriculture, which are both better than tenant farmers. I'm saying. Um, I think that covers it. Um, well, army model. Um, generally, I tend to go for professional army. You get more troops with mass conscription, but I, professional army just, I, I still want my military to get be kind of politically powerful. Um, and professional army also gives you some combat buffs. Um, it let lets you build you up your barracks to maximum. I don't care about reservists generally because they fight worse and. And stuff like that. It's a bit more expensive to have a larger standing army, and you obviously you don't. Uh, you, well, they, they, those are soldiers who could be working in your factories and whatnot. But generally, I like the combat buffs, and I like also for my military, my armed forces, to have some political strength because I want that combat bonus that they give when they are happy. Um, the patriotic patriotic fervor one I want that when I'm going to war which might like that often I find is the edge that lets me win on I guess opponents that are militarily similar on militarily similar strength to me uh, so generally I go for that you know the, the, that this it, it's less uh, it's less it's not that professional army is just objectively better it's just what I tend to go for um I think that I think that covers it. Um the only thing I have left maybe is that um maybe I should explain the what actually this um 
um, this modifier that is on, um, say, technocracy, right? This modifier that says 33% political strength to academics, to engineers, officers. This goes for autocracy as well. Political strength to aristocrats or and to officers. So this is different from um, the political clout one. Say, for example, uh, appointed bureaucrats, for example, has a buff to political strength. Um, oh no, they changed it. Okay. Um, hold on. There's okay. There's uh, yeah. Okay. Russian army has one. So this says uh, armed forces political strength. Right. This gives immediate power to the interest group. Um, so they, it just makes this interest group um, more influential. When and same goes with like uh, on um, uh, local police force grants the landowners more political strength, right? This same that's that directly to the interest group, right? Um, when it comes to these political strength from aristocrats or officers or you know to academics, to engineers, and uh, and stuff like that, that is to the profession. Like to the pop itself, right? Which is, works a bit different. Because the pop actually, like academics. Um, say, uh, like academics or engineers or officers. They generally have a political leaning, yes. But they are not all voting for the same, uh, the same interest group. Say academics, right? Say these... Uh, like, let's take these, um, um, well, I can take this North German uh, academics for, for a, uh, for, as an example. Uh, these North German Protestant academics, um, they vote, you can see their voting block here. Their interest groups um, are the Intelligentsia and the Petit Bourgeoisie. Uh, they, um... Okay, let's see. The, the breakdown is here, yeah. The 65% of them support the Intelligentsia, as in the, the interest group. 25% uh, of them support the Petit Bourgeoisie. And then some minor the support other stuff. That's right. Um, that's right um, as well, right? Uh, so this means, like, if if I give the academics in, in, in this case, Brandenburg or in, in um, Prus Prussia power, that means that, yes, uh, that will increase the, the strength of all of these proportionally. So the 65% will be get modified by, will be multiplied by 1.25. Um, and the same goes for this 25%. So whatever, whatever that, that is, it, 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 it roughly, obviously, it roughly translates to giving academics power, obviously roughly translates to giving the intelligentsia power. Like, that that is quite intuitive, right? Um, it but it, it also gives the bourgeoisie some power. That that might be good to uh, good to know. The same thing goes for for example, if um, uh, officers is a good one because like officers. Um, hold on, let me find some officers. Um, officers um, give um, officers obviously aligned with the military, right? Uh, yes and no. 75% uh, align with the interest group armed forces. 30% uh, of them align with the landowners. Obviously, they are rich. Officers are rich people. They are part of the... Many of, of them are part of the aristocracy. Historically, right? Um, so they, they, they are... Own them. Some of them might own land. The cavalry and whatnot, right? So they... Um, Obviously, giving power to the officers through these laws um, and whatnot that that will increase the power of the mil military. Yes, but it will also increase like thirty percent of the votes that you increase will also go towards the landowners. A uh, pretty small thing, but quite um, interesting, right? This goes for all of the works that uh, um, all of the uh, all of these modifiers, right? Uh, giving the engineers. Uh, um, I don't know if I have any engineers in this, this early in the game, um, but giving the engine the engineers power is generally I think that's trade unions and 
and uh, mostly Terminator trade unions, but also maybe Intelligentsia. Oh, we have some here. Oh no, I'm actually wrong. Well, also this can shift, right? Like depending on you know what laws you have enacted, and you know what how how the engineers are doing. If they are rich or poor, if they're angry or sad, they might. And and you know when you um when you unlock socialism uh, in the tech tree. Um, they uh, might, uh, you know, shift um, towards like socialism is really <laughs> invented re and, uh, yet. So the engineers might, you know, shift from petty wars and the industrialists towards more trade unions and so socialism, right? As the game progresses. Um, but that might, but, but this might be uh, uh, something to be aware of, like giving the engineers power as of right now would um that would give um that would give a uh, hold on that would give political clout to uh, the pedi bourgeoisie and uh, industrialists where's the breakdown Let's, uh, let's just have these for um, as an example. Yeah, 51% uh, are petty borders free, 25% industrialists, 11% um, the church. Kind of spread out, right? Six, six of them support the trade unions. Uh, that will probably change depending on how pop, like, you know, when socialism is invented or whatnot, right? But um, uh, so that, you know, might be important. Like, it, it is a, a bit more like indirect. Um, buff towards trade, like interest groups rather than this uh, very direct buff that for example I think serfdom and slavery gives uh, uh, the landowners just power directly just just increases the the the, the amount of power that landowners have on, you know, like this number here right the clout just increases that directly while uh, buffs to uh, the different professions and different pops might you know a buff to the engineers might be in the early game a buff to the engineers might be um, uh, well give helping you with the industrialists but in the late game will might actually give the more power to this as they are voting more socialists that will give more power to them doesn't really affect that you know that much not super super important but might maybe nice to know for some people um all right I think that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask me uh, in the comments. Now, uh, I, I has, have as a policy to respond to every comment that somebody puts on my video. Um, so reach out there and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer any questions that you have. And uh, other than that, uh, happy, a good day to you and <laughs> farewell. See you next time.